Hello, it's Molly Reamer with Bridget's Grove and 30 Days of Goddess, and welcome to March's Practice. I have several things I'd like to share with you this month, so I actually wrote myself little notes. I usually just speak from the heart, and uh, I had so many things on my mind that I wanted to share with you that I I had to type up some little notes to remind myself of what I wanted to make sure I get across this month. So before we get started, though, why don't you go ahead and take a nice deep breath. And really let yourself come in, come in, come back home. I find it really powerful to consciously, intentionally, and mindfully come back home multiple times a day. So deep breath, bringing yourself back home. You may wish to put your hands against your heart. One hand is good, one on your belly, one on your heart, or both hands against your heart, where you can kind of let that warmth soak into you. The warmth from your hands soaking into your heart, the warmth from your chest, from your heart soaking into your hands. And letting yourself feel where you are right now, however it is. Maybe you're too busy, too buzzy. Maybe you're feeling kind of slow and languid or bored or restless. Welcome yourself back home, however you are right now. And then go ahead and take your hands into prayer pose in front of your heart. And then lift them up and kiss your fingertips. Maybe put them against your forehead as well. Feel that centering sensation coming back home. Okay, welcome. So thank you so much for being here. Whether you have been with us since January of last year or whether you are starting today, everybody's welcome. So you can start today or you can have, you may have been walking this path or engaged in this practice for the last, you know, 430 days. It's, it's, you're welcome no matter what. And so a 30 days of goddess really is about creating devotional practices that fit your life. So I spend a lot of time talking about small practices, pockets of presence, micro rituals, small practices that fit our lives. And 30 Days of Goddess was born from, I have these years of experience in theology and goddess-centered practices, et cetera, et cetera. And it was born from that kind of question of, you know, I feel the goddess in my life. You know, I feel the truth of this path, like in my bones. What do I do though? What do I do now? And so 30 Days of Goddess is not about giving you a big list of things that you have to do. Instead, it's about creating small devotional practices that fit into your life as it is. It is also meant to hold space for and incorporate things from other teachers and practices. So if you're working on prayer book for 30 Days of Goddess, and you also love working with the guy in tarot from Joanna Powell, and you're taking a tarot class with her, you can go ahead and keep your notes from that in your 30 Days of Goddess book. So it's meant to be an encompassing sort of space for you and what works for you. And uh, what I've really found, like I, I find that this practice for me has encapsulated or crystallized kind of everything that I've tried to offer, everything that I've tried to share, everything that I've tried to, tried to create and make and teach over really probably the last at least the last seven years, possibly more like the last 15 years, it kind of crystallizes it all into this form or this process or this, you know, kit or buffet of resources. You don't have to use all of them, but the things that I've made kind of all work together to create this, this process. And I really think 30 Days of Goddess helps us to build and nurture a living experience of theology in practice. Theology with an A, that's study of the goddess. And so it's, it's about this living experience of 
our goddess-centered path and the sacred that permeates the day. So I find that a 30 days of goddess practice, I'm using that kind of as synonymous with or shorthand for daily practice or devotional practice. And it, um, you know, it opens our eyes, it settles our spirits, it nourishes the heart, and it helps us return to trust over and over again. 30 Days of Goddess offers this holding container for sacred experiencing, a sacred space for listening. I'm looking at my notes because I want to make sure to say these things. And it reminds us of how we are connected to the pulse of the sacred in every day. When we feel lost, when we feel confused, when we feel disconnected, we have only to come back to our breath, only to come back to the heartbeat in our wrist or in our own chest to know that we belong. The goddess is as close as that next breath that next heartbeat, that next pause to say like, you're okay and you're magic right now. And um, so anyway, each day I find that we're guided, we're inspired. And it, and this, the, the prayer book offers you a space to hold that guidance, that inspiration, that magic. But it also, ev- the part of the heart of 30 Days of Goddess is also about making space for yourself in your own life. So it's about daily practice. It's about goddess-centered practice. It's about devotional practice. It's also about making space for yourself in your own life. So I talked about coming home, you know, again and again. Well, that's what 30 Days of Goddess is about, is coming home over and over again, recentering yourself into your body over and over again, reconnecting to the sacred over and over and over again in these infinitely, infinite small ways. And, uh, and, you know, big ways too. So the, um, yeah, the goddess is as near to us as breath, as heartbeat, as song. And from this daily practice, from this commitment level, from this devotion, uh, that we experience a sync up or an attuning and we cultivate faith in the threads of the holy that wind their way through every single day, a perme this this sense of the sacred begins to permeate our awareness every day. And, you know, life is not going to be perfect and you're not going to walk around in a constant state of connected bliss. But I find that 30 days of goddess practice offers us many opportunities per day to come back home and to walk around in at least a brief state of bliss multiple times a day. And um, so this daily practice, this prayer book, this pause, it makes a space for you to hold space. And the prayer book itself becomes so much more than a journal. It's a temple on paper, a chamber of discovery, a treasure trove of wisdom and insight, and a compilation of magic as it breathes its way through your world. And so, um, that's, so that's kind of what it's about. And, uh, but the, the heart of it is, nurturing and creating devotional practice that works with your life, that fits into your life. And so what I offer is like a potpourri or like a buffet. You can take what works for you and use, uh, leave the rest and you can modify or adapt or change, etc. The core practice is always free. Additional, I make a starter pack. I make a starter pack of add-on materials available to everybody who wants to uh, participate with them. That's all, that's free once a month. And then if you want everything that I make, then uh, you're welcome to join the Goddess Magic community on Patreon, which is patreon.com slash Bridget Scrove. And there you have access to all the stuff that I generate. So I make, I usually make a new set of affirmation cards every month. I usually make a new set of prayer cards every month, a new set of little goddess stickers, the prayer book files, etc. So as a member of the goddess magic community on Patreon, you have access to all of those things. And then if uh, that doesn't work for you, or you don't, it's not in your financial resources to be a member of that community, you always have access to the monthly public post and these printables and starter pack or sampler pack that goes with each month. So you still have everything that you need to ha- fully participate in a 30 days of goddess practice. Um, without ever paying me for anything. So, you know, I love it if people do want to, to uh, join up and contribute something financially, but this practice to me is important that it's accessible to everybody who's interested and wants to participate. So what I offer is a news, the newsletter, and you can go to the dedicated practice homepage, which is bit.ly bit bit.ly slash 30 days of goddess bit.ly slash 30 days of goddess. And, um, 
and you can sign up for the newsletter there. I usually send out two 30 days of that as oriented newsletters a month, one at the beginning of the month or the very end. Like, so it's, it's an anticipation of the beginning of a new month. And then I send out a mid month one as well with some updates. I offer a monthly set of prompt words, 31 prompt words. They're intended, 30 Days of Goddess is intended that whatever month you start with, so whichever video you watch, whichever prompt list you look at, whichever prayer book you have, you can use that in whatever month you are, you're in. So I do, you know, I kind of link up the cover imagery to the season. I link up the stickers to the season and, and I, I do some seasonal elements, but my intention is that any of these could be used at any time. So if you bought a book in February and you don't use it till June, you'll still find that it works for you. So that's my, that's my intention. But I offer a monthly set of 31 prompt boards. I offer a starter pack of printables uh, that are free. And then the extras are available in the Goddess Magic community on Patreon. I offer the journal and the, the or the companion prayer book and the basic starter blank files are available in the, in the public resources. And then I, there is a kind of seasonally connected professionally printed one available in our Etsy shop. So this is March's, this is February's that I'm currently working on as I'm still making this video in February, even though it's for March. So I'm working on those pages and they get pretty fat and full of wisdom, full of magic as you go on. So there's the printed printed books. So you're always welcome to print out the pages and make your own if you wish, if that meets your creative need. If you want to purchase one that's spiral bound, I find it really easy to have. It's like, here's my space. You know, this is what I need right here. And it has everything you need. It has um, prayer cards in the back as well and little quote unquote stickers. You just have to cut them out and glue them. So they're not really stickers, but the sticker feeling is there. And then tiny little affirmation cards that you can stick in. And so each month, the book is kind of a grab and go little kit that you can use. Um, you know, if you have nothing else but a, a pen and some scissors, and I guess some glue or a glue stick, you can still create something every day without needing a big pile of resources. The other possibility is I have the simple logbook format. The logbook format has three months in one, and it just has a little tiny space for each day. So if you find all the space in the larger 30 Days of God Goddess book to be kind of overwhelming, the logbook might work for you instead. It does not change every month. There's just one three-month edition of that, and it has the little cards and things like that in the back. And um, I also have the option of a coloring book format. So this Breaths of the Holy coloring book has a prayer for every day for 30 days, a 30-day prayer practice. But rather than writing your own or creating new art for every day, instead you would participate in a 30 days practice by reading your prayer and coloring and possibly adding other things. You might glue some, I've only done, you know, I put some stickers in the front and then I glued something up here. So you can, um, you know, make it your own with additional things that you glue in and things like that, if you wish. And then we also have the 30 Days of Goddess Companion deck, which is a whole little system, kind of a mini ritual system, where you have prayers, prompts, and practices in deck format. And you can pick one, you can mix and match from that. You can pick a prompt, a practice, and a prayer every day from the deck. And it's kind of a done for you little mini ritual. So hope would be the word of the day. Your practice would be to trust your joy, pay attention to joy. And then there'd be a prayer. Interestingly, may we protect that which is precious. May we trust that which is sacred. May we reach out to touch the trailing threads of liberating change. And that's kind of interesting because the word of the day Today, while I'm actually making this video, is protect. So it's kind of fun that I got the card that has the word protect in it. So that those decks are also available. You have printable resources so you can print out your own little deck and read prayers aloud, etc. But I really consider to be kind of one of the most basic or core smallest practices is to offer a prayer. And the prayer can be spontaneous. It can come from your heart. It can be based on the prompt word. Or it can be a prayer you read aloud from one of the cards that's included in the prayer book, 
or from the deck. Or we also have the companion devotional, Whole and Holy. 30 Days of Goddess was originally created as a one month celebration, like launch bonus kind of celebrating the release of the Whole and Holy Goddess devotional book. And then 30 Days of Goddess really took on a life of its own and became, you know, 365 Days of Goddess and counting. And uh, so sometimes I think we forget that there are devotionals also available. And so you can easily have this book and read one of the prayers out loud, either to you or you can read it to yourself or read it out loud every day. And that can be your devotional practice. So you might want to light a candle. You might want to sit with your heart, hand on your heart. And then you might want to open the book just randomly and read a prayer aloud. And that can be a daily practice for you. So you have a lot of options and a lot of choices. Those are the things that I offer. As I said, you don't have to use any, you know, you can use one of them if you want to, and you can add in a whole bunch of other stuff if you want to, or, you know, you can mix and match as months go on. Uh, there's also a class. And so there's a perpetual class that's the 30 Days of Goddess Daily Practice Experience. And that is essentially this resource library of pretty much everything I've made about goddess-centered spiritual practice or daily practice and all put into one class. And then there's a simpler, more streamlined version that is new for March that is the spring kind of add-on. So a new set of videos, a couple new audios, but much simpler. So the original 30 days class, and I'll link to both of those below. The original 30 days class is like really pretty in-depth, deep dive into devotional practice and everything I've ever made about it. The new class is kind of a supplement or a add-on. So it assumes that you've already taken the other one or, you know, that you don't need to take the other one. And so it's a lot simpler and pretty much has the, li the little small videos and uh, is much, much uh, briefer to take part in. And so that is new for March as well. And uh, so the things that I wanted to, um, the other things I wanted to point out for this month or to like emphasize. So last month we talked in the uh, video for last month, I spoke, or the audio for last month, there was no video, there's just an audio. Oh, uh, I spoke about ways to return to the sacred when you're feeling out of sync or syncing back up when you're feeling disconnected. And so this month I would like to invite you to consider your nourishment shortlist. Like what do you need to feel nourished and whole and healthy and happy? in a day and what's your nourishment shortlist and so for me it's writing movement and contemplation like that's what i need every day and when i say nourishment short shortlist it's like what is it that you most long for what do you crave on an almost physical level like you feel this longing like so like an almost painful physical like longing like i have to have this so i feel that way about going outside like if I don't get to go outside in the morning in particular, I feel it like a pang in my heart all day till I finally get to go outside. And so one of the things that I've realized in this devotional practice and in this daily practice and in my commitment to 30 Days of Goddess is to you know give myself those things first, even if it's only for a few minutes. So even if I step outside while I'm still in my pajamas and I just step out for 15 seconds and look at the sky is so much better than waiting until noon and going out for 30 minutes. Way better to just step outside when I'm feeling that craving, that deep craving. So that's what I want to ask you is like, what's your, where are your, that, that, that yearning, where's your yearning, where's your longing, where's your craving? And then how can you bring that back home? How can you bring that to the very forefront, even if it's in a very small way. And so I would say, you know, when I said that 15 seconds versus 30 minutes, I of course would prefer both of those, or <laughs> I would prefer to have 30 minutes in the morning. And I often do have that, 
but rather than let the yearning go unmet, rather than let the call of longing be unheard, even if it can just be 15 seconds. So, um, so that goes along with something that I've been talking about a lot lately. And I'm working on a new book that's tentatively called Walking with the Goddess. I'm also working on another one that's a 365 Days of Goddess devotional. But the Walking with the Goddess book is really about kind of the, really the 30 Days of Goddess concepts and other devotional practice concepts in book form instead. And one of the things that I talk about in that book is the smallest possible practice. Like what is your smallest possible practice? That's what you commit to. So 30 Days of Goddess it has infinite possibilities within it. And I suggest that you pick the smallest possible practice and that's what you commit to for 30 days. And so uh, that relates also to my concept of a blessing basket of daily practice, which is available to you in a past <clears throat> past resources. And it's also going to be in the new class, the second session, 30 Days of Goddess class. So the blessing basket, what I encourage people to think of as that is instead of, you know, a toolbox, think of yourself as having... <clears throat> A blessing basket available and it can be metaphorical it may actually be physical I like to have my little bag that Penny Hyde made <clears throat> sorry I've got something in my throat uh, and it has in it you know colored pencils a little travel altar and a shell and my little scissors and it's like my little grab and go you know kind of thing so your blessing basket might be an actual physical basket some people have some beautiful baskets a little tray you know something like that but also there's a metaphorical blessing basket like the things the small practices that you can draw upon without much supplies or without much effort and without much time like what can you draw from and so your daily practice comes from that you select from the blessing basket based on what else what the day is holding it doesn't have to be everything all at once, but you have these resources available that you can pick from as you need. And so, you know, some ideas of what a blessing basket might hold, this is that metaphorical idea, would be, you know, body-based prayers, prayers that you read aloud, songs, um, physical practices, movement practices, dance, things that you do body based with your hands, um, oracle cards, runes, woman runes, um, art. What else? Best for me from the blessing basket is something physical, prayer, and um, um, oracle cards. And then also um, losing what I was going to say about that. Hmm, prayer movement, oral cards. Oh, and a physical gesture of some kind. I think I just said that at the beginning, but I didn't say what it was. So hands on the heart, et cetera. So that's your, those are your blessing baskets and you can pick from that whenever you want to. And the other thing I wanted you to consider is so the nourishment shortlist, the blessing basket concept, but also, and there's two audios about this in the classroom. One is about mud rooms and devotional practice. And the other one is about pockets of presence. And so if you're part of the goddess magic community, you've already probably heard those or heard me talk about them, but they, and so I'm just going to really briefly say that the idea of having a mud mud room is kind of thinking about how a mud room in a house is like a transitional space between getting home and like transitioning into the next thing. And so devotional practice in the smallest possible practice idea can involve those mud rooms, those metaphorical mud rooms in your life, those transition points in your life. So when you go enter the enter or leave the bathroom, when you get a drink of water, when you're brushing your teeth, when you're laying down to go to sleep, when you sit in whatever chair, when you're making a meal, when you're drinking your tea, those are kind of the transition points. And anything in your day that is a transition point is this metaphorical mudroom that can hold a daily practice because you already have these points that you're traveling through. And each one of those points can be infused with a brief little touch of the sacred or a, just a, a reminder, just a, a mental check-in. I sometimes find one of the most powerful things is just to be like, goddess, like, where are you? And then I'm like, ah, and in that moment of asking, you know, kind of like, okay, like I really wish I could feel the goddess in my life right now then I feel her. <laughs> like that's what that involves is that pause to like reopen the connection, so to speak. 
and and then pockets of presence. So those little small moments where you have a pocket of time, particularly a pocket that you might fill with something that you don't find particularly fulfilling. Like I have my little example of, oh, I'm going to see what my little Sims are doing on my little Sims game. And that's not particularly fulfilling, particularly not on like a spiritual level. It can be kind of fun and I don't, I'm not going to shame and blame myself for doing it. But those little pockets of presence where you have a little moment that you might fill in with kind of a low quality activity, the spiritual equivalent of getting a handful of Skittles and eating it. <laughs> what might you fill in to your spiritual life? instead with that's not skittles and that's not sims you know what might you put in there instead those are your pockets of presence those small small moments where you can offer something else and you can give yourself something that you need and that you crave and um and i already really said that about the the prayer books and um in the past i've said you know like this practice is not about the book like you can have a 30 days of goddess practice and you can never have a book at all I, but i don't want to minimize the impact of the book the having the prayer book and having it only be 30 days worth of time is it really does become this this, uh, its own temple, its own, you know, paper altar. It's a holding space in this container for emergence and magic. Like it's all there. And the book itself can be kind of like a touchstone. Like it can sit by your computer and you can put your hand on it. it reminds you of all that magic that you carry and all the, that power that you've experienced and all those things that you've witnessed and all those prayers that you've written and those, that gratitude that you've offered and those affirmations that you've said, said, they're like at your fingertips with your book. So I don't want to minimize the impact of the prayer book too, because I really find it's a, a really powerful thing. And I'm grateful for having, you know, invented it. It's not, it's not, um, you know, there's plenty of different books. There's plenty of books and journals and things like that. But this, this container of 30 days of God is this process of the little cards, the book, the daily prayers, this practice, devotional practice with the prayer book. It's, it, it creates this kind of container and it's a, you know, process that kind of you know, dropped on me in a goddess lightning strike of inspiration. And I, and I love it. And I love sharing it with other people. So I don't want to minimize the power of what it is that I've made with this or that I've been inspired to share with this. I don't want to like take that away by acting like, oh, you don't, you don't know how to do it. Um, and there's really something that was my final thought is there's really something about having this container and having this dedicated space and having it be time linked. So only 30 days at a time. And that's something that really makes this process special. And that really makes this process magical. And that really makes it powerful and practical is so if somebody had said to me, Hey, do you want to do this thing for 400 days in a row and never stop? <laughs> or, Hey, Molly, do you want to make 400 days worth of content for 430 days worth of content for other people? Like, do you want to do that every day and never stop? Like, just do it all in a row and, and never take a break and make 430 pieces of content for other people. I would have been like, no, that sounds like way too much. And I actually don't know why you even think you should ask me to do something like that. And, but in truth, so that, so giving yourself a 30 day container, there's kind of like no, um, there's no pressure with that. It's not a 400 day container. It's not a lifetime container. It's not an infinite, never ending, you know, dedicating your whole entire life and your firstborn child to it. It's 30 days. And that gives you the opportunity to change, adjust, recommit, and keep it fresh. And always remembering that no shame, no blame. You can always start again. You can always begin again. And so I encourage you to think in terms of this 30-day practice. Like, And that's why I still call it 30 Days of Goddess, and I'm not calling it I also, I use the hashtag goddess every day, which I also strongly believe in and am committed to. And um, I have the 365 days of goddess, you know, kind of concept guiding me. And, um, you know, I'm working on the, a devotional companion for the 365 days concept. And truly, you know, I'm a big fan of daily practice. Daily practice is a huge part of my life and has been for years and years and years and years. But taking it 30 days at a time feels nourishing and inspiring and taking it as forever can sound like a little bit too much pressure. So 
30 days. What are you going to do with the next 30 days? How are you, what are you, what do you want to commit to? What do you want to infuse your life with? How do you want to increase your mindful awareness of how the sacred permeates your very being and permeates the world? How do you want to heighten your awareness of those threads of magic that weave their way through your life and all around you? Like, how do you want that to be? Then commit to that for 30 days and see what happens next time. See what, what changes, what you want to do. And uh, so thanks for being here. Thanks for listening. I know that's a little longer than I sometimes go, but I felt like I had some almost like kind of background or reminder things to catch up with and that I wanted to share. And so I'm going to end with a little tiny poem that's from a couple of days ago. But before I do that, I'm going to invite you once more. Hands on the heart. Deep breath. Maybe give yourself a little love and appreciation for showing up here, showing up again, whether this is the 430th day or the first day, here you are. <sighs> yeah. So take a minute to savor that you've made it. And maybe make a little promise to yourself right now that you are going to give yourself at least one piece of that thing you most crave every day for the next 30 days. Even if it's 15 seconds, even if it's 15 minutes, even if it's two hours, you will give yourself a touch of those things, that thing, those things that you most crave, your deepest longing, the most power, powerful yearning, you will give yourself some part of that each day for the next 30 days. So make a promise to yourself and then show up and keep the promise. And that's why I say that small as possible practice, because if your promise is, you're going to do something to nurture devotion every day for 30 days. It can be as simple as lighting a candle. It can be as simple as laying a hand on, against your forehead. It can be as simple as laying a hand against your heart and taking three deep breaths. But you keep your promise and you show up for yourself. Making a space for yourself in your own life. So here's a little poem. There are crossroads of change and choosing in every life, sometimes in small ways in every day. Each one an opportunity to listen, each one an opportunity to feel, each one an opportunity to chart your own course with care. Thank you so much for being here and may this practice nurture nourish, support, and sustain you.